Hello and welcome everybody, I am Socio Psycho. Today we take a look at The Last Door Collector's Edition. This is a game created by The Game Kitchen and it is a 8-bit adventure style horror mystery game and we are going to explore what how well it actually does that. Now on the options menu here you see you have a large array of languages which is always nice. Full screen I'm disappointed in, it doesn't have an option to enable the correct screen size as I'm running with 1920 by 1080 and it's not actually screened in, it is boxed a little bit from side to side. The music and effects is nice to see on different sliders and the music in this game definitely picks up the slack and making the game have a terrific atmosphere where otherwise the game I feel would just completely fail. The music is what drives this game forward and the story in it is not horrible but it is only propelled even greater and more so by the fact that the music is amazing. It plays all the right keys in all the right places. Now when we look into episodes, you have four chapters and four episodes. Now the nice thing about this is every episode has its own separate save log. So if I play through episode one and two, and I want to go back and play episode one again, it's not going to disrupt my progress in playing episode two. And that's very nice. When we're going to extras here, you have your achievements and credits. Those are pretty obvious achievements are tied into Steam. Now the extras is what is interesting. I don't not sure why these were left out of the game, but they're little story plots, they're fillers, and they kind of go over areas of the game or fill in gaps or explore more of a world where you may not have known about. The reason why I bring this up and the reason why it's nice is because while it's not directly important to the main character and the main story, it fills gaps and holes and helps explain the rest of the world as to what is going on or what's happened here or there. And it's a different perspective as to looking at the world. Now, like I said, it's not overly important to the main storyline. But it's nice to see that whether these were cut out, or whatever the case may be, that they actually kept these in in some form. As you can see here from a gameplay, it is an 8-bit style, and you can see how it's cut off on the sides of the screen. This, I was worried, was going to be a real deterrent in me being able to play the game appropriately, but the game tells a good story, and that's really important when you're going about and playing the game. Because the way the music entraps the story, if you're going through a certain corridor or building, you hear a certain harmony and melody, which plays along and suspenses forward this world that continues to always be one step ahead of you. The story of a game is set in more of a darker tone, which is really nice. And it does so in an interesting way by allowing you to have a feel of the story. Now, when we look at this paper, and you'll see here. March 8th, 1843. I'm exhausted. Father made me rehearse today for eight hours. By the end, the music wavered with his trembling hands. It's still a long time for the day of the show, but he insists that everything must be perfect. One more song, he said, over and over. Father got really mad at me, and he started to shout when, after many hours of rehearsal, I said that I wanted to go out and play a little bit in the street. More and more, he obsessed with rehearsing, with concerts, with perfection. Am I not the one who earns the money to feed us? Am I not the one people come from all over to see and admire? Is my name not the one printed on all the posters? My name! The dolls for sale and the theater entrance, they have my likeness, my dress, and my beautiful hair. I should be the one who makes the decisions. One more song. Yes, one more. A last song for you, Papa. So as you can tell, if you experience the world, you get a sense of the characters that you come across. Who was here? What were they like? What was the atmosphere like? And it propels you in a manner of speaking to continue onward with the story. And it is a point and click game. And while I am not overly excelled at being good at point and clicks, but I felt the balance of where you need to find stuff versus what you need to figure out fit well with the story aspect. You were able to deduct fairly well within reason how the story progressed and where your items needed to go and what you need to do next. Now there are a couple parts where you do get stuck. But it's never to a point where patience and a good solid reasoning can't get you through it. If you deduct what is happening and you're patient with the atmosphere, you'll figure stuff out. It's not overly difficult, unlike some point and clicks, and its main purpose is to tell a story rather than try to 
hurt the people who are playing and following along with the story. And that's what I feel is really the most important aspect of this game. And because it does that, it has such a powerful start. It will grab you in right from the beginning, right from episode 1, and it will force the emotional connection with the character. That continuation, that does fluctuate, I mean you can't keep it at a high pace all the time, then it loses its value. And that's where music comes in. The game is meant to make an emotional response happen from you. But when you have fillers, when you're walking around and figuring stuff out, it's the music that's the most important to propel a sense not of terror, but of suspense, of curiosity, of wonder. And this game does that very well. The biggest turnoff may be for you is the fact that it is an 8-bit game, and I can completely understand that when you're looking at modern games in comparison. Do I think this game would have been a lot better if it went with something more artistic looking? More maybe new age graphically? Perhaps. Still keep the side scroller, but it didn't. And what's important is that if you like point and clicks, and you like a good story, this is definitely one to give a shot to. To pass this game up just because of its 8-bit characteristics would be a shame. And it's not often, it's really not often that I would say something like that because I value a good story and I value really good graphics, but good graphics don't automatically make the game any better. So if your story is bad and your graphics are awesome and you're a story-based game, it's not going to end well for you. And that's what matters. And this game pulls that off. It sets the atmosphere very well with the tools it has, the story it tells, the characters you interact with, the world it puts you in, and the music that propels it. The puzzles in the game I have not found to be overly difficult or too easy. And everybody's different. Some people may get stuck on that part that's simple and other people vice versa. But at the end of the day, when it comes all down to it, out of all the stories we come across, out of all the games that we end up coming across and playing, and all the things that we end up buying or overlooking because we think they're not good enough, or we're disappointed when we do buy a game, I can tell you, this one is worth it. It's fun, through a, it tells a good story, it has good atmosphere, it has amazing music, and it will make you feel most important over anything else is that it will make you feel and give you an emotional connection with your character or at very least the situation that is happening. Thank you everybody for listening. Thank you everybody for watching. I have been Socio Psycho and it has been my pleasure to bring you this game. One that I highly recommend you see and play for yourself. And I hope to see you next time. Take care everybody.